If I had one word to describe what it's like being a job applicant in the market right now, it would be this. Okay, you are not gonna believe how shameless employers are getting. This TikTok by More Molly Please points out how absolutely absurd employers are today. Within the last three months, I've applied to over 350 jobs in the social media and marketing world. All of them have been in Los Angeles or remote, and most of them I am definitely qualified for or even overqualified for. For the social media specific positions, the ones who have gotten back to me, either before any interviews or after one interview, they ask you to provide specific viral content ideas, either written out or actual TikToks filmed for them, even if you have provided them with a portfolio of other things you have made go viral. It's because they want to steal your ideas. Twice now, people with much larger followings than me have been chosen over me for the job, even though neither of them had brand social media experience. The next lesson I learned, people still don't understand the importance of social media and want you to be the Instagram, TikTok manager, email manager, and wear like seven different hats, and then offer you the equivalent pay of your first internship. So this TikTok by More Molly Please points out this growing trend among employers of demanding work from people before they actually work for you. That's right. There's a lot of companies out there that are expecting people to work for them for free as a form of trial period before they're even paid for the work that they're doing. And there's a ton of companies that are doing this. A lot of them frame it as on the job training. A lot of people ask for work as part of the resume process. And ultimately, what it really just amounts to is just demanding free labor and finding new ways to exploit workers while trying to get around labor laws. Because at the end of the day, if a company is doing this, where they're saying that they're going to try to hire a social media person and they get tons of applicants and they expect every single one of the applicants to provide some type of content for them, I'm going to go ahead and make the assumption that they have in some type of agreement that they get to own the copyright to whatever the applicant sends them. There's a good chance that they might quite literally take the ideas and run with them or take the content and run with it and maybe potentially not even hire anybody and they could get months worth of work from people without actually employing anybody. And that's not to say that every company is doing that, but it's something that they could pretty easily do and probably get away with. But I just think it's funny because, you know, we hear all of this stuff about, you know, billionaires being job creators and these giant tech companies and these innovators, they're all doing such wonderful things. When at the end of the day, these giant companies are bending over backwards to find different ways to get away with not paying people. I mean, just think about it for like a second. Why do giant companies go out of their way to go to countries that have been the victim of United States imperialism just to pay people dirt wages? It turns out that maybe, perhaps, these companies aren't interested in being job creators. That's not what they want to be. That's not what they want to do. In fact, their ideal world would not involve anybody doing any job. Their ideal world would involve only a magical land of consumers that buy their products and then workers who work without being paid for anything. Thing. Now, obviously, that world is impossible, but it's what capitalists are always striving for, which is really funny because the truth of the matter is, a lot of people, when they talk about socialism, they say, oh, socialism works great in theory, but terrible in practice. But the reality about capitalism is that it doesn't even work in theory, and it definitely hasn't worked in practice. I mean, the United States has basically had to rob and pillage the entire world in order to maintain our collapsing economy. And so, how can we really say that? that socialism has failed when the United States has basically made one of the major military goals of the United States to destroy any attempted socialism out there, which, by the way, hasn't even been successful. Vietnam's got a pretty stable economy, Cuba's got a pretty stable economy despite a very significant embargo, and so does China as well. It turns out that socialist countries are pretty fine at managing their economy. I mean, just look at China. Over the past 10 years, they've tripled their average wages, so it turns out out that not only does capitalism not work in theory or practice, but socialism definitely can work out in theory and in practice. So all of that is to say, as employers are becoming increasingly exploitative in the United States, demanding that people do work for them for free, these people are also running around crying to the federal government about how workers are being treated too nice and uh, trying to claim the stimulus checks caused inflation, when in reality, it might be perhaps 
perhaps the record profits that these giant companies are making and them arbitrarily increasing the prices for goods. So while they say one thing, that they're these heroic job creators on one hand, on the other hand, they're doing everything in their power to undermine the ability of workers to live a decent life. This is Ben Corolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on the Young Turks Twitch channel, and you can follow me at Benjamin Corolla on Twitter.